Today, Sega's brilliant swan song goes up against one of the most underrated Nintendo consoles ever. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we're going to put the Dreamcast versus the Wii U. Now, some people might think that this isn't a fair fight at all, but keep in mind, these consoles are fairly similar in their own right. They both have motion controls. They both have light gun games. They both took online experiences to the next level compared to their predecessors, and both consoles happen to be some of the best there is, even though they were epic failures. And today's war isn't going to be settled very quickly. This is just the first battle. So let's do this. Second Opinion Games. Let's start things off with a little bit of football by Sega's NFL 2K1 on the good old Dreamcast. Now you gotta notice that right off the start, the graphics here look unbelievably good. This is the first time people started watching this and thinking that maybe they're watching a real football game. Also, the announcers are unbelievably well-spoken. You have one guy giving you little bits of information here and there, and the other guy's just snarky as all heck. It leads to the near-perfect combination, but that would be nothing if the gameplay wasn't also smooth and refined, which of course it is. Is. If you're familiar with playing any football game in the past 15 to 20 years, then you could just pick up and play this one absolutely no problem. However, over on the Wii U, we got Madden 2013. Now, at first, I thought that the Dreamcast was going to blow this one out of the water. But then I realized how freaking great this really is. It's easy to control. Juking takes little to no effort at all. Also, using the Wii U gamepad here to pick your plays is just darn perfect. You could even cycle through the whole playbook or even just go with the epic suggestions that they give you. Let's face it, the experts are going to be right most of the time. The only thing that the Dreamcast has over this is the announcers. The announcers here just feel like a standard Monday night football crowd, and even though they're very informative, you know, they don't really bring anything really good to the party here. So you might as well just turn those off and enjoy a great game of football. When you compare the two head-to-head, -head, you know, the Wii U just has it beat. How about hunting games? On the Wii U, we have Clabella's Pro Hunts. It's one of those very true-to-real-life hunting games. You have to creep through the woods, make sure you're not too loud, sneak up on animals, or maybe just stay stationary and wait for like an hour for something to finally to come to you. Then you have to take your time, line up your shot, make sure the wind's not blowing in the wrong direction, and then blow a hole through an animal. Track them through the woods, and then claim your prize. This is just like hunting, only you don't have to get dirty yourself. Also, your entire day will just fly by as you're enjoying the atmosphere of the woods and all the noises that are going on around you. Trying to track your animal actually seems fun here, and you could even get some advice by some of the pros that take down your epic foes. So, when you're playing this game, you're just having a darn good time. Over on the Dreamcast, we don't have any hunting games. Well, there is kind of the one. It's D2. When Laura goes down in a plane crash, there's aliens or mutants all around her. It's really the whole mystery of the game. And this is one of those multi-genre games. Sometimes it feels like a point-and-click adventure. Sometimes it feels like an open world. Sometimes it's a shooting gallery where you just mow down those mutant alien space creature zombie-like things. And other other times, it's a hunting game where you have to hunt to survive to eat your food. Now, most of the time, you're just going to be shooting a hole through some rabbits with your infinite ammo rifle, but it is bolt action, and Laura's really not very proficient with it. So then you could cook and eat it to regain some health. There is some moose, but they're really hard to hit, and also they're janky as all heck. Look at them just trying to run around. I don't even know what the heck's going on. Also, Laura can't hold hold her rifle still to save her life, which it would if she could ever actually shoot any of these animals. So, I guess I'm eating rabbit tonight. I guess the win definitely goes to the Wii U here. 
Super Magnetic Neo for the Dreamcast is a 3D action puzzle platformer. Now it looks kind of like just a poor man's Crash Bandicoot, but it's far more complicated than that because this is definitely a action puzzle game. Two things that really shouldn't be done fast-paced environment like this because you have to control magnetic fields of things. And I keep on forgetting whether or not I should pick the things to attract or to repair from each other so you actually have to switch back and forth quite often here sometimes you even have to scoop animals or creatures up in the zone and then throw them the knockdown barriers overall this game ends up being way too hard because just trying to do this on the fly gets a little rough and some of the jumps are just darn tricky also the Dreamcast controller doesn't really help out very much but this is still a fairly good game if you can get your hands on it. Over on the Wii U, we have a little game called Shiflings. This was a download exclusive game with some kind of generic music in the background. It also happens to be a 2D puzzle platform adventure where you control these two little space aliens trying to collect cola and making their way to the exit. Now the gimmick here is that they're tethered together and one can just blow up their suit and then the other one is kind of small. You have to use this dynamic to make your way through lots of different puzzles and platforming. Sometimes you can even jump on your little guy's heads. You can move these guys together or separate, and this feels like it would be a lot better if it was just a two-player game playing with a friend. But as it is, it is just way too complicated for me. I can't even get past like the third stinking level. Maybe it's just because I'm not good at this style puzzle, so I guess the winner by default is the Dreamcast. How about fishing time with Sega's Marine Fishing? Now, the Sega Dreamcast actually had a motion controller in the way of a fishing controller. They actually made quite a few fishing games, too. And I believe that Sega Marine Fishing is the best one of them. It's like an arcade fishing game. If that sounds completely off-the-wall bonkers to you, that's because it is. The music is hard rock and roll, something that doesn't go with fishing whatsoever boy is it ever fun when you get a hook though and wheel it in the sega dreamcast line actually feels super tight as well the whole freaking controller rumbles too and it fits in your hand really well i cannot believe how fun they made fishing in like real life this is just the best. Now, if you happen to hate fishing, chances are you might tolerate this game. If you like fishing, then you're gonna love this game. And if you really, really like fishing, you're still gonna love this game. Over on the Wii U, we have Rapella Pro Bass Fishing. Now, this is a fishing simulator style game. You're gonna roll you out on the water and use motion controls on the Wii U tablet to find the perfect fishing spot. Then you have to pick your lure through your tackle box. Then you have to cast your line using the whole tablet itself as a giant motion controller. Doing this is really tricky. Also, you have to swing it just right and swinging the tablet feels really quite awkward. However, once you do get the hang of it, then you're gonna just sit there and watch your lore as you slowly reel it in. Again depressing. and again. The there's some fish here, but chances are they're not going to be biting. You actually have to pay attention to what fish are in the water and then switch the lures to actually attract those style of fish. You have to get a perfect cast by estimating where you're going to actually throw it and then throw the freaking tablet just right in order to get it perfectly there and then you'll attract some more fish but it doesn't stop there with its overcomplicated controls because then when a fish does bite you have to set the hook just right by pulling back on the tablet now chances are you're gonna be so excited that a fish actually did something in this game that you're gonna rip the tablet back super fast and that is not the way to do it you have to slightly pull it back to set the hook but if you do it too slow the fish will also get away so trying to get this just right is just darn infuriating 
infuriating. Also, the announcer continuously talks in the background, saying the same thing again and again. Even though I turned like down the volume to the announcer himself, like making it so I wouldn't have to listen to him, and then he it's still Minnesota talks Ocala anyway. Also, this happens to be one of the most expensive Wii U games out the there, perch, meaning that Google, this is Sunday, just Shad for Martin super, Pass, super hardcore fishing fans here. I'm definitely going to give the win to the Dreamcast. Maybe the Wii U's light gun game will fare a little bit better. We have Cabela's Dangerous Hunts 2013. Now there is a good first person story running gunning mode here, but I'm going to focus more in on the light gun mode, where you have to switch back and forth between the rifle and the shotgun, blowing apart every animal on the screen for a epic possible score. There's also tons of different environments to cycle through here, and killing animals definitely feels satisfying. Sometimes they can strike you back and even kill you, knocking you out of the level. There's also another mode here called Reflex Mode, where you could kill all the animals in a certain order for super big points, or maybe just kill all the animals and then shoot everything else in sight. Yes, this is one of those games where you just mow down tons of innocent little animals and don't feel bad about it. Over on the Dreamcast, we have House of the Dead 2, one of the best light gun arcade games ever made, and they managed to make it even better when it comes home, because the Dreamcast has a pretty darn good light gun. You don't have to keep on feeding quarters into your console, and the fact that it has an original mode that lets you replay again and again, unlocking more stuff like different characters to play as, or maybe even stronger bullets, extra chambers in the gun. However, most of the light guns for the Dreamcast sort of had an auto-reload feature, so it's best to just cheat and just fly through the game blowing apart everything like you have a stinking submachine gun at your disposal. This is definitely a better light gun game, and it also feels a lot better because, you know, the way the light gun sits in your hand versus that weird Wiimote zapper thing that the Wii had. Yeah, I'm, again, gonna have to give the win to the Dreamcast. How about some tennis now? We got Virtual Tennis, where it's just a super cool game of Pong. However, the graphics have been really updated here. The Dreamcast has definitely seen better graphically. But, you know what? This does look pretty darn good. It also plays, like, better than real tennis. Most tennis games I've ever played, you mostly just rush the net. Here, trying to do that is gonna probably give you a game over. Also, they don't have to throw in all these crazy power-ups to make it feel deep. No, you do have to strategize by running back and forth. You could even somewhat control where the ball goes and how to hit it for a strong hit or a lob. And trying to figure out all the intricacies of this game is quite impressive. Sometimes the volleys can go back and forth for a rather long time, just wearing you out. But then when you finally do score that point, it feels really well earned. Also, there's some double matches here, where then you could pick two guys with hats versus two guys with not hats and make them just be your... You know, because this actually starts getting incredibly fun. Over on the Wii U, we got Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Something that certainly looks a lot better than that good old Dreamcast game. However, it feels a lot more generic. Sure, you have all the Mario characters and some of the power-ups like getting really big. You also have some weird customized shots when you manage to make it to a certain space on the board, but playing the two back to back, man, that Dreamcast just kicked the crap out of this tennis game because it doesn't feel good at all. It's not realistic, and if you're playing a Mario tennis game, chances are you weren't going for realism, but if you even like tennis a little bit, well, then you're also not going to like this Mario tennis game because it's kind of garbage. The controls just don't feel right on a whole lot of levels, and you're definitely better off playing that one by Sega. Okay, grand finale time. On the Sega Dreamcast, we have Alien Front Online for our tank game category. That's right, a tank game category. Now, this game could be played online back in the day, and it even had a microphone that sat on top of the Dreamcast controller that you could do real voice chatting with. Well, sort of, kind of. 
Basically, you would record yourself saying some profanities or racial slurs, assign them to certain buttons on the controller itself, and then at any point in time in the match, you could hit that button, and then everyone would hear your favorite profanity or racial slur. And that's just how the game was played. I don't really want to get into how much people did it back in the day. It's the only thing they did. They just recorded the worst possible things they could possibly say, and then th that was it. Now, you do have human tanks versus alien tanks, fully destructible worlds, tons of different little power-ups that let you unleash massive destruction upon your alien foe, or human foe. You could even run over some grunts, whether it be aliens or humans, and this just feels like an epic online experience. And you can still kind of get online to this very day if you know how. Over on the Wii U, we have Tank Tank Tank. This was an arcade style machine game that was ported over to the Wii U, where it's very much like Alien Fun Online, only now you fight giant kaiju monsters around every stinking corner. Sort of like Alien Defense Force mixed with Alien Front Online. Does it make the game a lot better? Well, eh, eh, sort of. You know what? For this, it's nearly a tie. Playing both games today seem really fun. However, if you can play the Dreamcast game online, well then that one definitely takes the cake because playing with friends just means a better gameplay experience overall. Wow, the Dreamcast just probably kicked the crap out of the Wii U. It was actually much closer than you might think. NFL 2K and the Madden game are both really good games, but the Wii U just edged it out. The hunting games definitely are better on the Wii U. The 3D or 2D action platformer puzzle games, well, you probably can't go wrong either way, or can't go right at them depending on if you're even any good at this. Fishing, definitely the the Dreamcast had in spades because it's just a more awesome arcade experience. Light guns you can't go wrong, but again the Dreamcast takes the win. Moving on to the tennis, of course Nintendo completely dropped the ball on this one. And in the category of tanks, tanks, tanks versus Alien Front Online, they're both terrific games and I kind of leave it up to you. So let me know which one of these beasts you think won this first darn battle in what will be an epic war of the failed consoles. But I'm putting all my money on the Dreamcast at this point, at very least. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it because two of my favorite consoles happen to be the Dreamcast and the Wii U. Colossal failures that actually had terrific games that not many people have played. So if you have your favorite Dreamcast game going up against your favorite Wii U game you want me to take a look at in part two or maybe even part three, well I left it really wide open for you by knocking out fishing and hunting and shooting and tennis games on this video. So the next one's only gonna get better. So until later, I will see you again guys.